making some pals, and there's also therapy, too. Hello, everyone. Welcome on in to Park Pals. Thank you so much for joining me. I am uh, on my own today because Maddie is crushing it, giving life to a wonderful slash stressful work situation um, and event. So I am uh, going to be doing this on my own today, but we have a lot to cover. And I want to and she also sent in a summary and uh, thoughts and everything. So we'll definitely get her take because there are some hot takes that I think you guys sent in uh, via the poll on Instagram about this Leslie versus April situation. So I definitely want to get into that because that is a contested uh, thing, in my opinion. Uh, so anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and start with the recap, though, from last episode. So we did talk to Mary Faber last uh, last time. Uh, so that I hope you guys enjoyed that. She was so fun. So great. Um, but I didn't do a recap on our previous episode because I just wanted to give that episode to to Mary. But the recap. Um, so in the last episode, we talked about how we uh, this is talking about the Unity Quilt, um, Ben's parents episode. Uh, I said that we definitely meet Ben's brother, who is named Henry. And uh, we don't. Maddie was right. I went back and I watched the Partridge episode. We do not meet Ben's brother. So I'm sorry. I felt like so confident. I was just uh, totally imagining a face and a name and a like sitting next to his sister at the table in Partridge at their home family home or whatever the hell. Like I just imagined it. So we don't meet his brother. Speaking of that, though, we did talk about the tire swing with Henry, um, the name Henry on the quilt. It has Georgia on it. So I'm kind of guessing that that's where he lives, Georgia. So hopefully that's a thing. Um, I'm just making that up, <laughs> but I don't know why else Georgia would be on it. So hopefully, you know, I don't know why we don't meet him. I feel like this would be, that would be a cool situation for us to meet his family, but maybe there's a deleted scene that will, will be coming up uh, when I, when we get to the Partridge episode. Okay, next thing I was wrong about, <laughs> that's basically what this recap is, is that I'm wrong about some things. Uh, we talked about 24 Carats and the Bruno Mars song because we talked about Ron investing in gold and how maybe we should invest in gold and all these things. Um, and Maddie was right. I thought in the Bruno Mars song he was referring to diamonds, but it is gold. So Maddie was right again. I don't know how many times I have to say that, but yeah, I also remembered because um, on the weekend, sometimes I work at the farmer's market and I see uh, some chains like gold chains that say 18 carat or whatever and that, that totally slipped my mind that is a thing so sorry about that 24 carat gold is real in the Bruno Mars song carats for diamonds are much smaller um yeah like one or less you know what I'm saying and unless you're like really rich you might get like a 2.3 something carat diamond so anyway that's that and the very last thing is that I asked my friend about why Iowa and Minnesota might have a rivalry because she's from Iowa. And she had said that it may be just like a Midwest thing in general, which we kind of talked about. But also there might be competition, especially like specifically between college sports, too. So it could be college sports. Uh, and Because we talked about regular sports, I think. Not regular sports. That's awful to say. I don't mean regular. We talked about NFL and uh, professional league uh, foot, National Football League, if you will, because they're still professionals, the college people, college players. Um, but we didn't talk about the college rivalries, which I think is a real thing. So that could be what they're talking about when Ben says don't mention Minnesota. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Or don't mention Iowa. Either way. So if anyone has any other insight on that, please let me know. Okay. So now we're moving on. Oh, I did also want to tell you guys, my mom got Twizzlers that were orange or something. I don't know if they're actually orange flavored. Maybe they are, but it's like a Halloween situation. And it really reminded me of our conversation last time about the Twizzler versus Red Vine situation. So hopefully you guys uh, are not getting into any fights with your spouses or spouses, families over Twizzlers versus Red Vines. Hopefully you guys can all come to a compromise. Okay. Also, you will be hearing Phoebe, my cat, in the background. So I just don't feel like shutting the door because she's going to get mad. And I just feel like she's welcome here. So you might hear that in the background. Okay. Season five, episode seven, Leslie versus April, written by Harris Whittles, who we love. You guys probably know this if you've been listening or if you're a fan of Parks, but Harris Whittles was a huge backbone of Parks and Rec. He's also one half of the Animal Control Department, super uh, big writer on Parks, and just in general comedy writer. He used to do stand-up. Rest in peace, Harris. He has passed away at this point in time. Um, 
But yeah, he was a great comedy writer and a friendly reminder. He also invented the term humble brag when Twitter was a huge thing. Um, yeah, he is was such a light for the parks community. So uh, it's and it's exciting because he'll 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 start being in a little bit more episodes coming up. Um, this was directed by Wendy Stanzler, who has directed four episodes of Parks. The last time we saw her was Flu Season in Season 3 and Meet and Greet in Season 4. We'll see her again next season for Recall Vote, uh, which is a great episode. And she's done so many things. Like, she's one of those kind of journeyman directors that have, journeywoman director, who's just done kind of one episode of each thing. Um, I mentioned this last time, or, uh, well, the things that I love anyway. <laughs> uh, I mentioned this last time, but I think she has directed at least one episode of Ugly Betty Nashville the TV show which I love you guys know I'm based in Nashville and I got to be an extra on it pretty much everybody here that wanted to be an extra could be I think um I knew a lot of friends that were extras on that show. Sex in the City, So Help Me Todd, which sadly was canceled, but she did direct an episode of that. Uh, the Mindy Project, Grace and Frankie. I mean, these shows are just so great. So I think um, go Wendy. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so we've got a great team here, and now I will let Maddie take it away with her summary and thoughts. Hey, Park Pals. I'm here with a summary. Leslie and April go head-to-head over Lot 48 when April realizes her new passion of creating a dog park in Pawnee. Ben helps Tom in trying to get Renta Swag off the ground, and Andy spends the episode trying to find the culprit behind the stolen computer. Um, I think that there are a lot of different ways people could feel about this episode. Um, For me, I kind of expect better from both April and Leslie. Um, I... It's, it's definitely difficult, right? Because we've watched Leslie struggle for Lot 48 for so long. And then to have April swoop in um, and be like, well, I want it for the dog park is kind of, I mean, it's like April should know how important that is to Leslie. And it's kind of silly and childish of her to, to just steamroll in and say like, well, I want it and I'm going to take it. And then to say, oh, you're not going to support me. Then I'm going to go to Jam, who she knows isn't trustworthy and knows is like a bad guy. Um, and she just goes to him anyway. It's kind of like the extra slap in the face to Leslie um, that I think was just so unnecessary. Um, when it comes to Leslie, I think she's the mentor here, right? And and I think she should have seen, well, there's space on Lot 48 because it's a huge piece of land for a dog park. But, you know, we also are going to make it into a full-ass park. So, um, yeah, I think definitely there was some pettiness on April's side when she didn't get what she wanted. Um, and I hope, you know, and, and Leslie could have definitely been a little bit more open-minded and not so, um, you know, just thrown aback and immediately gone on, on the defense and the no, I'm not going to support your dream. Um, if it's going to take over my dream kind of thing, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where my head is around that. Um, glad that Andy ends up with a job at the end of this. Didn't put that in my summary, but There it is. And that Ben gets job offers throughout the entire episode. Um, I love that. And I think it just shows, you know, the hard work that he's put in and the recognition he's gotten for himself is going to pay off. And I think we'll see, um, you know, we'll see Tom in that position one day too, where he's worked hard uh, to get where he is and he'll start having that recognition too. So, okay. Well, I'm sorry I can't be there this week. I will see you all next week. And I hope you have a wonderful episode, Holly. Yay. Awesome. Uh, Okay. Yeah. I guess I'll just go ahead and get into it now, honestly, about where I am with how I feel both of them acted, whose side I'm on, all these kinds of things. So, uh, and then we'll get into what you guys thought because there are definitely different schools of thought. But anyway, I personally, and I guess it's, I'm just showing that I am uh, always with Leslie and always relate to Leslie, but I am on Leslie's side with this, I guess. Um, I do have, obviously, some thoughts on how to compromise. I guess my initial gut reaction is I'm with Leslie of, like, I've been trying to do this for four years and uh, or longer, but yeah, four years. Or, well, now we're in season five, so five years almost. Um, 
And to have you not even talk to me first before this, or maybe your presentation was the way to talk to me, but I don't think it was. I think it was more of just like, this is what I'm going to decide to do, and I'm going to go to jam in the end, you know? Um, And so I kind of feel that it was just a little disrespectful for April to jump in with that when she knows how hard Leslie's has worked and how much sacrifice she's also gone through to get the pit covered, like... At that whole thing with Mark about like asking for um, forgiveness instead of uh, permission kind of thing. Like she's gone through hell and back to try to get this to be a park. And I just felt like it was a little bit like weird because I know that April and Leslie have kind of created this bond, this relationship. April, even though like she has a sassy vibe, uh, energy, whatever, she sees how hard Leslie works and she knows how much Leslie wants this park. And so I think it's really... uh, I don't know. It just felt icky almost to me to just kind of be like, oh, I want this to happen here where I've been trying so hard to uh, get something done. And you're just going to come in and have that. Uh, Now, on the other hand, here's what I will say. It's kind of Maddie mentioned this, too. It's a huge area. I think it's a big enough park that or big enough plot of land that you can have a, a dog park section. And I don't know why Leslie wouldn't have suggested that. I guess she was just so blindsided by April saying that. But I think you could have a dog park section. And you could have a section where it's specifically April's side. The dog park is uh, just for that, um, just for those people and for those dogs. So I think it's possible to have done that instead of, you know, black and white thinking of like, it's all or nothing. This is mine or yours kind of vibe. Um So that's where I was with it. However, you guys and the people on Parks and Recollection, the podcast, uh, most of you are on April's side. I put a poll up on my personal Instagram and on my uh, and on the Parks Instagram. Most people on my personal Instagram were with April. I think it was like only 35 or 40 percent were with Leslie. However, on the Parks Instagram, uh, I think Leslie won, but only like four people had voted or something like this. So I guess when you combine it, it was kind of like, you know, it could have been a tie. But I think most people were on April's side with this. Um, And yeah, I guess I just was putting myself in Leslie's shoes. Um, Someone who I have mentored and like have seen such potential in and who I've like shared my thoughts and hard work with on this park. I would have expected you to come to me and say, hey, like I'm thinking that this would be the best place for the park to be. How can we make this happen where you can have your park too? Now, I know that's not April's character. That does not seem like something that April would do, even in season five. Like she's not the best at communicating and things like that. So maybe that's what it is too. Um, And then I'd also, I guess me as a mentor, if I was a mentor, um, I'm sorry if that sounded pretentious, as a mentor, I'm not a mentor, you guys. Uh, I'm just a fan. Anyway, I would have asked uh, in the presentation, maybe like, can we talk about this a little bit more and maybe not shut it down completely, which I know that part sucks for Leslie. And then to go to jam is just kind of a knife in the back. But at that point, I think April is just like mad at Leslie. So she just wants to do anything she can possibly do to get this done. And also, like, stick it to Leslie, if you will. But those are my thoughts. And, you know, once uh, once, uh, Maddie is back for the next episode, I'm sure we can dive into that a little bit more when we get to the Pawnee Commons. But I do feel like there was just such a way for this to be, um, what you call it, Uh, compromised, you know? Not to sound like a broken record, but there could be a dog park and a people park. You know what I'm saying? It could be combined. Uh... Anyways, so, but I know that's probably not what April wants, but that's my thought, and that's kind of how I felt about it, so we'll move on, and we'll go from there, but from a writing perspective, like from the show, this is really cool to bring the park back, because we haven't been talking about the park, we've been talking about city council, um, and I'm really glad that we're getting back to the park, because that's like why this whole show kind of started, and where Anne came in, and all these things, so I think it's really important, um, especially with the government bureaucratic red tape all that stuff to see that it takes it could take up to five years or more to get this started especially or to get this done especially when so many other things get in the way not in a bad way necessarily I mean city council was a full-time job campaigning um and other things that needed to get done um so anyways that's kind of where I'm at with that okay so write in if you need to I get it oh my gosh though this cold open you guys huge deal 
Okay. We start in front of the White House. Leslie is saying she'll win in 2020, and then she'll win in 2024. I love this. What a time capsule. Because in 2024, we're here. 2020, um, Joe Biden, you know, did win, which is insane. Um, And right now, we basically have a version of a Leslie running for office. So that's very exciting, and I am excited to vote for her. Okay? Oh, my God. Uh, Ben's coming back to get his stuff from being in D.C., he got Leslie a uh, an engagement present. Oh, my God. They go into this room. There's staffers there. They're in this, like, conference-looking room, very regal-looking. And guess who is here? Leslie's crush slash hero slash everything. Joe Biden! Oh, my God. President Joe Biden is here. At this time, he was vice president. Um, Leslie's face. Oh, my God. And Joe Biden's face. He just looks so young, so different. I mean, you can't tell me that the presidential office does not age you. OK. Oh, my God. But still, I mean, it was a while ago. But anyway, um, I can't believe they got him. It's really, truly amazing. And oh, my God. Leslie clearly freaks out. Leslie thinks he's asking to take over Hillary Clinton's position and jumps the gun. And then she leans in to kiss him. Oh, my God. And it was like a full on lean in kiss vibe. And Ben kind of has to like touch her to bring her out of it. Oh, my God. And then Joe Biden complimenting her on her parks work. What? I would pass out. I'm surprised she didn't pass out. Can't believe it. And then Leslie turns so wild. I mean, top Leslie freakouts. Of all time, I feel. (laughs) And Joe Biden was such a good sport. I mean, they said that they mostly had scripted lines, like they did write a script for him. But he also kind of improvised and played it with Leslie or Amy um, because Amy was definitely playing around, too, with her improvisation and kind of just, you know, living in the moment of Joe Biden being there. Insane. Uh, Great job. Great, great, great job. So excited that they got Joe Biden. President Joe Biden. Well done all around. Oh, my God. So good. And I think they were talking about in like certain interviews and stuff how he would do it if he could just play himself, which like obviously, of course, he's only going to play himself. But um, that was so amazing. Oh, my gosh. So happy for uh, Leslie. And so like all the green flags for pulling all the strings that Ben did to get her that engagement present. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? No, I can't imagine. I can't. So, so good. I love that. Amazing. Okay. I'm going to try not to talk too much about that, but you guys get my excitement. Okay. Whoo. Moving on. Um, Ben is talking to Chris about joining an accounting department. He says that now he wants a stable job. Now that they're getting married, they have a house to pay for, all these things, which makes total sense. And I do love that we're seeing his nerdy, like, dorky side and that the accounting firm loves it. You know what I mean? Like, he is loving this. He's a great sport with... um you know, telling all these jokes and stuff to the accounting people. And I just love that they're showing his side of like what he's passionate about, what he's good at. Uh, and then Tom is explaining rent a swag to Ben and saying he needs his help for the math side of the thing of things. Also do love that um, he calls Ben books and Chris looks. That's really, that's funny. Um, anyway, it's kind of nice that Tom trusts Ben with this and is showing serious growth for asking for help with an actual good idea, you know? Um, and I think he wants to listen this time because Ben was so involved or well, tried to be involved with entertainment 720 and Tom did not listen at all, which to be honest, um, I'll, I think I have a note on this later. I'm kind of like surprised that Tom or that Ben even like gives this the time of day because of how much Tom didn't listen at all last time. Um, so anyways, moving on. Now we're at the parks department and is April is talking about the comparison of dog parks in D.C. versus other cities because I'm guessing that she saw dog parks in D.C. Parks in D.C. are pretty great and Pawnee's dark dog parks are disgusting and gross. And Leslie is such a proud mama bear for making this presentation. She wants to take pictures. She's like... um just almost crying basically and she does cry well in her talking head later um leslie says april came to her about building a dog park and honestly april making a presentation about work is actually kind of jarring like in such a good way like it's so nice to see that april cares about something and is going to leslie about this which i think also is another weird thing because leslie went to april it sounds like before the presentation happened so she could have said like i'm imagining these people or this uh this portion of where i want to put the dark park so that seems like it could have been a conversation but i get it um but i do think this is a great growth moment for april you know to see her 
caring about work and about saying per capita, all those kinds of things. Um, there is a deleted scene here, actually, where she's, like, live scrapbooking. It's so funny and so cute. Like, Leslie is taking the picture, and it's a Polaroid, so she takes the pictures out of the Polaroid camera after she takes them and just, like, immediately starts taping and gluing them down. It's so funny. I love it. Um, Leslie says that she should that April should think about how she presents herself um, because <laughs> during the presentation, she's wearing kind of a weird shirt. And uh, it's because Oren, her friend Oren, is doing an entertainment show called Human Farm where you can go and feed humans from your own hand. And it's a weird commentary, I think, uh, on something. <laughs> it explains it in the deleted scenes and it does explains it in the episode, but I didn't write it down and I'm sorry. That'll be a recap. Um, April then, okay, this is where we get to, like, the weird, crazy part. Um, or however you want to label it. But April suggests Lot 48 for the dog park, which is the park Leslie wants to build on. And it makes, you know, it made me confused. I already said my, I think that was another word that I was thinking is confused. Not just, like, mad or upset, but, like, kind of confused. Like, you know how important this is kind of vibes. Um. It didn't seem right to me, but that's my opinion. You guys can hate me if you want to and write in your thoughts, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, like I said, Leslie still could have talked about it and not been as rude and not been like shut down. But anyway, Andy comes in to the office and discovers that his laptop is missing. A game is the foot, he says. Um, he takes this as an opportunity to investigate a crime as part of the police academy exam because he thinks this was planned. He thinks somebody in the office stole something from him on purpose because he had told people to steal something so that he could practice for, uh, you know, being in the academy for the police academy. Um, and then he can't find his glasses and they're on his shirt or like tucked in his shirt kind of next to his tie. <laughs> they took my glasses too. So funny. Um, but he interrogates parks, all the parks people. And Donna said that she went to Miami taking her talents to South Beach and uh, love that so much because it shows that she's a traveling girl. She likes uh, to try different men. You know what I'm saying? Love that for her. And um, she's being very sarcastic, saying, yes, I took your computer and sold it on the black market in Miami. And Andy is so hilarious. He thinks that she's being so serious. Like, you don't know it, but you just uh, admitted the crime. <laughs> freaking hilarious um and the, this apparently is uh the when she says i'm gonna take my talents to south beach it's a reference to um an e an espn hour-long special called the decision where lebron james announced that he's gonna take his talents to south beach and sign with the miami heat so that's fun um, now we're with Ben and Tom and Ben is saying that Tom's mission statement actually makes sense. And, uh, Tom asks Ben to be the CFO, but Ben already has a job, so he'll help as a friend, but only if Tom actually takes the suggestions seriously. And again, this is where I was kind of like, Ben, okay, I'm kind of surprised that you would even like, you know, agree to this, but it makes sense. I think Ben thinks that Tom and him are closer than maybe they are. Or maybe they just have that whatever dynamic they have created and Tom just wants to, or Ben just wants to be there for Tom. I guess, you know, that makes sense. Um, I do love Ben's look when Tom says, well, too bad we didn't see it coming about <laughs> entertainment 720. And Ben's like staring at the camera, like, Oh my God, you definitely saw it coming. I saw it coming. And I told you, um, but uh, anyways, April, Leslie, and Anne now are going to look at other dog parks to kind of sway April from choosing Lot 48 as the place where she should have her dog park. And Leslie takes them to an industrial waste cleanup site, which is so gross. Um, I will say, like, I don't know. I feel like if it wasn't close to a road and obviously, like, take out the hazardous waste obviously that little patch doesn't seem terrible like if you were to put some like actual um like benches and actual grass and stuff but like the size of it I guess I would say but yeah the fact that it's so close to the road that dogs could just run out in there and then also like I don't know how you'd go about changing the hazardous waste site like can you change it that easily I don't know if you could so that's probably not gonna work but Obviously, Leslie is trying to sway her, and Leslie is not being, like, super open-minded about this. So this part is where Leslie is, like, she had some other mentoring that she could have 
used. Um, but I definitely see where <laughs> Leslie's like totally reaching for like grabbing at straws, basically like lots of natural light. <laughs> so gross. Um, and then April says lot 48 is the only one that works and she's going to bring it up at the city council meeting. And um, yeah, I mean, that's that's I think that's the part that is even more so, uh, you know, I guess a betrayal to Leslie because she knows how awful Jam is. She knows how much uh, April knows how much Leslie has kind of butted heads with Jam and how much Jam has been such an ass to her. And like, even when she's being, you know, reasonable and everything. But I think it's one of those things where Leslie didn't do this on purpose at all. But I do think that it's one of those things maybe where you have to go through it yourself. April has to see for herself that Jam is not in this for partnership or for helping April. He's in it for his own sake and tricks everybody to you know have to get his selfish gains so I know that I think that would be the best way for April to finally see as, as opposed to Leslie saying like don't trust Jam he's awful these are the things that he did to me blah, blah, blah. um and so I think April needed to go through that to come to that realization that Jam's not going to help her and Leslie and her really do need to work together if that makes sense um uh, let's see. Oh, I do love the picture of Joe Biden on Leslie's desk. It's so cute and how she kind of like, you know, imitates his voice and says like, everything's going to be OK. God, he's good. <laughs> um, Leslie goes to see Ron about this. And I love that. Uh, that whole thing of like, thanks for agreeing to see me. I didn't. You just walked in here. I don't have time for a history lesson. <laughs> it's great. And Leslie makes up a story about removing parking meters and asks Ron how, like, there's this person, Leslie makes up a story about another fake person who she says is real that wants to remove parking meters and asks Ron how he slowed Leslie down when she was becoming too Leslie-ish, as she says. And uh, I love this also, the mulch do about nothing. That was one of the busy work, like, research projects that Ron gave her. And, uh, and I just... Love that pun so much. Um, Ron says sometimes he'd take her to JJ's and distract her with waffles. And it's really sad because uh, Leslie's like, what? Those were distraction waffles, not like friendship waffles. And breakfast foods can serve many different purposes. Um, but anyway, Ron says to do the same thing with the, the fake slash real Ricky but uh, and April and divert her attention by expressing an interest uh, and whatever she's excited about to distract her, um, which then leads to the human farm thing. Leslie finally decides to go to this human farm. Apparently, in the deleted scenes, April has been begging Leslie to go to this thing for weeks. So I don't know how long this thing has been running, but she finally, Leslie finally goes to kind of, you know, to try to distract April. Um, it's so bizarre, so weird. A guy at the front gives them animal feed but says to not feed the animals. Don't feed the animals. Um, so that's fun. <laughs> um, this character name, oh my gosh, the character names in this episode were so great. This character name is Gunch Merkwell. And the actor playing this character is named August Emerson. He's been in quite a few things. Uh, Scream Queens, a lot of short films, The Mentalist, Halt, Catch Fire. He did a great job. I tried to reach out to him, but I didn't hear anything back. So maybe he'll get back to me another time. But he, I thought he was like, his whole like demeanor and the way they did his hair and makeup and that like torn off flannel was really fun. Um, I do, I was wondering though, it didn't say anything in the deleted scenes. I guess this is just maybe something that Oren thought up. I don't know, but I just kind of wonder what group this is. Like, is this some organization where they meet weekly or any sort of like, you know, community project? Because he's not alone. I mean, this is a whole group of people partaking in this, uh, piece of performance art, whatever you would like to call it, you know? So I'm just like really confused on who and what this organization is benefiting. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, but it's great that Oren has this community that's willing to do this for him. Uh, all right, well, now we're at Sweetums, and Tom and Ben are trying to get an alliance with Sweetums for Rent-A-Swag, but they won't because apparently a molasses vat exploded, causing what sounds like a mudslide, like people died, which is really wild. Um, and this was based on a real event. There's, like, as wild and untrue and fictional that this sounds, this did happen apparently in Boston on January 15th, 1919. A molasses tank at 5 29 Commercial Street exploded under pressure, killing 21 people. A 40 foot 
wave of molasses buckled the elevated railroad tracks, crushed buildings, and inundated the neighborhood. Insane! Oh my god! I don't know how that would be to clean that up, to get rescue missions. Like, what a wild... Super unfortunate, terrible situation. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, well, and that kind of, I mean, I know it's not the same, but my heart really goes out to all the hurricane victims that, I mean, even in East Tennessee, we're so lucky in Nashville that we mostly just got some rain and, you know, streets flooding and stuff like that. But nothing like what I've seen in East Tennessee, Asheville, North Carolina, parts, uh, so many parts of Florida, Tallahassee, all those kinds of things where things are just destroyed. It's wild. I mean, it's so sad. So I'm really praying for everybody that is going through that. I think the worst of it is over, but oh my God, awful. Um, well, Sweetums is apparently starting a nonprofit to clean up that bad name of the molasses vat exploding and killing people. And Jessica Wicks wants Ben to run the nonprofit, which is a whole other uh, realm of what Ben is used to. But now that, like Maddie said in her summary, he's getting the recognition for running not only Leslie's campaign, but the D.C. campaign. And he's really starting to build a name for himself as, you know, this head planner organizer. Um, And so it's really I mean, it's pretty sad, too, because Tom is like, wait, so you're not taking any of my offers, but you're offering Ben a job like what? (laughs) Wild. Um. And now we're back at where Andy is interviewing the parks people. He's interviewing Jerry. We learn again. We're reminded that Gary is his real name. Remember in the trial of Leslie Nope when we found that out on his driver's license. Um, I love that Andy has a blank file, which I think is uh, a common TV like tactic. I wonder if they I'm sure they do that in real life, but maybe not as much. But a common TV tactic, I feel like the cops are sometimes having like maybe mostly in comedy, but they're having like a blank piece of paper where they think that they're, you know, giving somebody uh, more reason to be scared than they need to be. Um But anyway, I love how easily this is a great little moment. I love how easily Andy accepts that Jerry didn't do it. Like, first of all, first, he's like, you have to tell me or else it's entrapment. (laughs) And he's like, no, I didn't do it. And they both just kind of fall into this like, "Ah, well, you know, okay, I get it. All right. You didn't do it. Dang. (laughs) That was really funny. Um. Back at the farm, April sees right through Leslie and sees how she's trying to distract her. And then I love this when April asks what Leslie's favorite part is. And Leslie says immediately, she just says heavy handedness. And honestly, I know what heavy handedness is. But in context of this particular situation, I was like, what does that even mean? Because I wasn't sure what she meant by that. And heavy handedness, just I think what she meant, obviously, in general, that usually means like using too much of something, like hitting something too hard, being using a heavy hand with it so I think that's maybe what she's talking about but I also learned that it means clumsy and sensitive or overly forceful in case anyone was curious but she mostly just meant like doing too much of something I think (laughs) um and this is where she says that uh, April kind of drops this bomb on uh, Leslie that she's going to talk to JM, says that he's going to support the motion for the dog park. And like I said, I guess April just has to see JM in action before she can understand how snaky and selfish and not helpful he is, you know? Well, now we're at the news station and Ben is trying to get Tom's business um, a profile. It's like Pawnee Business show something like this um and he's trying to get tom's uh rent a swag to have some sort of like publicity to uh you know draw people to the store and the host wants to wait until the business is open and viable to promote it which i guess makes sense but at the same time i know a lot of people that have had stuff promoted before it opens um So I guess this host just like wasn't into it as much. But then Ben gets offered another job on this show because they need a political correspondent for uh, for this uh, show that they have a segment um, on politics. Oh, my gosh. And Tom is just like so busted at this point. And and by busted, I just mean like broken down where he's like, oh, my God, Ben's getting 8000 offers and I'm literally just getting rejections the entire time. Um. There is, oh my gosh, you guys, there is like a whole four minute long deleted scene of Ben just freaking the F out on TV. They're doing a test show basically to see if he can do it. I guess at some point he maybe accepts or says like, yeah, I'll think about that. I don't know. And 
They get him on camera. He starts doing exactly what he did on Purd, except for it's even worse. It's like he's hallucinating, basically. He's seeing shadows. He's seeing birds. He slaps the host because he thinks he sees a spider on him. He gets up on the chair and covers himself with his jacket and says he hears scuffling in the walls and, like, there's animals living in the walls. It's so crazy. He looks so sweaty, and it's just so fun, Um, and I bet that was so fun for Adam Scott to do, and I wonder if they gave Adam Scott freedom in that time because it was such a long deleted scene. (laughs) Oh, my God. Um... I do want to see, uh, oh, well, I have a note that it's like, it is wild to see how popular Ben is becoming, which is great, um, you know, for just from when he started, because we didn't really love him, we, especially we didn't love him at the beginning, because he was trying to shut down the parks department and cut the budget, and even Ron loved him, which was such a different take on it, because um, he was showing his not nerdy side, or his not like, he wasn't really showing who he himself was, like down deep, he, you know what I mean? The point of all that is to say that it's nice to see his arc and that people are recognizing. Because at the beginning of the show, you know, we learned that was his whole goal. He wants people to take him seriously. He wants to be in government for a while. And he was trying to rebuild his name and look where he's come, you know. Like, it's really lovely because he has shown people that he's great at what he does. He, uh, um his you know his his track record is excellent and i think that's really nice to see and it's kind of subtle in this one um because it doesn't like actively say that but you see it more which with the job offers which i think is really smart on a writing perspective so that's lovely um i do want to mention though that this character name uh the guy who plays the political correspondent well he's he's probably going to be a political correspondent in the lore of the show i guess um but he really you know he's the host of the um the business show that um, he's trying to get, you know, they're trying to get Tom's store on. And um, his name is uh, Brian Raisins. The, or sorry, the character name is Brian Raisins, which, again, we've got Gunch Markwell and Brian Raisins, which is hilarious. The actor who plays this is Paul Rust, who has been in a lot of things. He's an actor and a writer. He was actually in Human Giant, which is the sketch show that Aziz was in before Parks Days. Um, Aziz was in that with a handful of people that we know from Parks and The Office and just like the whole comedy world and stuff, um, which is so great and kind of wonderful that he got to come back and you know star with uh, Aziz in this little scene um he also starred in and wrote for a show called love that I really enjoyed you guys would probably enjoy it as well um it was with the gal who was on community the blonde haired gal and she's done a bunch of stuff after that um he also wrote on arrested development Bob's burgers he's now on a show uh, on Fox called the great north which is an animated show seems like you know an adult animated show I haven't personally seen it but um it looks like it's really popular so good for him very exciting tons of stuff going on for him all right well now Andy goes to Chris and we learn that the laptops have been stolen all over city hall Chris is so cute though because um he's just very smiling he's like what what happened he just seems very nice and happy and I love that for him (laughs) um and then we kind of yeah, again, like I said, we kind of learn, Andy learns that this has been, that, like, this is an actual crime. Like, this is not, you know, uh, something that his coworkers were putting him up to to test his police academy skills, you know. Uh, all right. So next we're at the city council meeting. Our friend Yvonne's is back. Yvonne Jordan, who plays Councilman Hauser. We interviewed him um, a while back. And you guys should definitely listen to that episode. It's so lovely. He is so great. Um, and he's introducing this dog park motion. Leslie starts booing as April is speaking, which is very petty and awful and stupid. Um, We know this. And the whole thing of like, I didn't hear anyone booing. I just heard one old hag. Oh, my God. Definitely. We're past the compromising point. Now we're just mad at each other and being petty and childish. Uh, Jam does his stupid jam thing, and he goes back on his word and says Ponch Burger should be built there instead for a nice profit, not uh, a dog park. And April's, like, really confused, upset. She's like, you lied to me. Like, what? And April gets jammed, which is very sad to see. And, I mean, to Leslie's credit, I will say, like, I don't know. Leslie definitely could have been like, ha-ha, I told you so. Like, I told you the jam was a snake. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, you shouldn't have done this. But she was just kind of sad for April, I feel. And she was just kind of like, eh. Like, I hate when he says that. You know what I mean? 
Um, well, now we come back to this sort of mediation between Leslie and April. Ron and Anne are there to try to help. And Ron says in this, oh my God, I hate this kind of, but it's funny at the same time. Ron says in this office, we shoot each other with respect, with respect. And then Jerry comes in and they completely disrespect him. They yell at him and they're like, not even saying anything like calmly as far as like, this is private. Get out. Like, Anne screams at him. This is private. Get out, Jerry. And of course, Jerry does his normal thing of like, oops, sorry guys. Bye. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so yeah, they kind of lock them in and they're trying to have a conversation about how to move forward from this fight that they're having about the dog park or lot 48 in general. Um, now Andy's talking to an officer about how they're going to solve the crime. And Andy is bummed because he learns that being an officer is a, is a lot of paperwork, especially in a small town, I feel, but not, not always just in a small town. But I mean, this is like a big part of being an officer is paperwork, taking people's answers. Um, it's not just crime fighting action time, superhero times, you know, which I know Chris Pratt is a superhero. I get it. That's a whole like fun world moment um but it is um interesting for andy because the officer says like if you're thinking that you're gonna like just be fighting crime and like taking down bad guys all the time like your you know cartoon version slash tv version of a cop like you might want to rethink this and i know he says it kind of like snarky and gross and like whatever but it's a fair point like if this is something that you think this is, then you might want to rethink the job because that's not all it is. What I'm doing right now, like taking questions and, you know, not having the resources to actually launch a full scale investigation, as Chris says, like you might want to think about this. Think about what you have to do. Um, Friendly reminder, this actor who plays the cop is named Tracy Howe. We've seen him in many episodes as an officer, and I don't think it's our last. We'll keep an eye on that. I don't think it's our last, but um, that's really cool that they brought him back. All right. Well, now Tom is in the courtyard. He's kind of sad and bummed and, you know, being really depressed and mopey. Uh, there's a pigeon right next to him, which I love. Oh, my God. I love that it's like right next to him. The sound effects are there. And remember, I mean, you guys, if you've been with us since the very beginning, this was such an obsession for me. I don't know why, but the pigeons that they had in the courtyard, they were some were real, some were not. Some added in sounds, some didn't add in sounds. I just love that they were so realistic with how the pigeons would be in the courtyard okay and I mentioned it like pretty much every time I saw a pigeon I talked about it okay it was an obsession and they we haven't really seen it because we haven't been in the courtyard as much and um, I just like that this pigeon is like right next to Tom like kind of as his friend keeping him company <laughs> and that sound effect or the actual pigeons cooing noises were really great to me <laughs> Anyhow, um, Ben comes out, tries to cheer him up, asks Tom what's going on. There's a definite, uh, oh, there's a definite continuity thing I was going to tell you guys. I didn't track the time uh, stamp, which I don't know how many of you guys would go back and watch it anyway. But in this, in this scene, Ben isn't speaking. Like his mouth isn't moving when he sits down, but the audio is still there. It goes fast, but it's definitely... There was something going on with the cutting of that. And again, like I said, it goes fast. So you can't really notice it unless you're a freak like me who watches for those types of things. Um, but yeah, love that. Uh, anyway, Ben just says, you know, tries to give him a pep talk and says, like, if you're passionate, keep at it. It'll turn around. Like, don't worry, you know. And that's really sweet. I think that's the friendship part that Ben sees. And Tom is really, I mean, bummed because he thought this was a real uh, viable great idea and then now people are like no I don't really want to buy into it no I'm good thank you and then offering Ben so much in the same space as rejecting him so that's got to be disappointing but I think coming from Ben who is a business person who has a logical mindset I mean that's really important for I think Tom to hear like just keep at it like we'll 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 figure something out you know what I mean um anyway so then Anne says, moving on, Anne says that she's going to have to force this because they're not speaking to each other. Leslie and April are not speaking to each other, even though no one leaves the octagon, as Anne says. Um, but Anne says, maybe April, you won't uh, say that you were being inconsiderate and Leslie wasn't being the best role model. And I think that's a really good term. Maybe inconsiderate is better than disrespectful because maybe it wasn't so blatant, but it was just inconsiderate and not as thoughtful. Um, but Anne said... It, so I feel better about saying it too. 
Um, they both say sorry, which makes more sense. Um, uh, and they both say I love you, which I think is so sweet and lovely. And I love that April's like, I don't want to do this in front of her. And Leslie respects that and is like, okay. And now we're cooking. Now we're actually all thinking about the same thing because Anne is like, look, I don't want a paunch burger in my backyard and I don't like paunch burger, but if there's one in my backyard, I will go there and eat there all the time, which is no good. So we have to figure out a solution for this. Um, And I do love how Leslie says she has an idea and it's not illegal technically, but it is a dick move. And I think that (laughs) is such a great way of describing her ideas sometimes, (laughs) Um, especially when it comes to the park. And uh, yeah, and I love that April agrees. And she's like, yeah, let's hear it. Let's do it. So I love when they're on the same team, because obviously, as we see a little bit later, it works. We're on the same team, you know? Well, Andy goes back to Chris and talks more about the investigation. And Chris says to, you know, think about what the policeman said. Like, really think about this job, the duties that it carries, you know. Um, And then Andy takes off his clothes because when he's upset and stressed, he gets really hot and the bad feelings make him feel sweaty. (laughs) Such a toddler move, but I love it so much. It's so cute. Um, But not something to do probably as a police officer or just in general as an adult in public. But still really funny. And Chris is just like so confused. Um, But Chris is really sweet and lovely and says there's a security Uh, there is a security guard job at City Hall, which is great. I think that's super thoughtful of Chris. And I think that's a really good way for Andy to see, do I want to do this? Um, Is this something I could do? Because it probably would be um, like less exciting than what Andy is picturing. Um, No, he doesn't get a gun. (laughs) So that is something to think about too. And yeah, I just think that Chris is that's a really sweet move, I think, for Chris to offer that and to give him kind of an insight into what being a cop might be like. So I'm really excited for Andy, to be honest, that he's kind of like moving forward in his career, going to be able to try out some things. Okay, now we're at Jam's house and we made a dog park in Jam's front yard and they say there's no park in this area for the dogs and there's no people park for the kids. So this will be your life until there's a park around. And they come to an agreement, which is great. Should have happened before this, but whatever. They come to an agreement to wait 90 days to get their plans together and come to a vote. Gentlemen's agreement, they say. <laughs> um, but they won. And Leslie immediately, well, won, I guess is a strong word. But yeah, they won the, the you know, the 90 days to think about what they want to do. That's really important. Um, and even Jam kind of goes back on that. You know what I mean? Like, ugh, Jam is so annoying, which we'll see a little bit later with Mary Faber, who we talked to, Catherine Pinewood. Um, you know, he goes back on the 90-day thing, and they're starting to, like, break ground on Paunch Burger. It's so annoying. Sorry, spoiler alert. But we'll get there when we get there. Um, so anyway, uh, they won for now. They won this little battle. And Leslie immediately wants to get back to it, uh, saying, like, okay, let's get to work. And Anna's like, hey, can't we just, like, take some time and enjoy things? Don't you ever just enjoy things? And she's like, I just said, let's get to work. How else do we enjoy things? I love that. (laughs) I mean, it's definitely something that Leslie, I mean, I guess if it makes her happy and relaxed, then, like, that's her business. But, like, I definitely think that she needs to somehow figure out a way to have a relaxation moment and have an enjoyment moment and really celebrate the things that she's accomplished because it's very important. I think Anne is right is what I'm trying to say. You know? You know? Okay. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but he was drinking the zero sugar water, whatever the hell, water zero, whatever, <laughs> with a little straw in it. <laughs> and obviously his yellow Corvette, whatever the hell, Lamborghini, what is it, Ferrari? I don't know. Whatever car is out there in the in the uh, driveway. So wanted to point out those little details. <sighs> All right. So we've got a tag and Barney is back at the accounting firm. He's got a gift basket for Ben and everything. They just love Ben so much and they love that Ben is back. I got to be honest with you, though. I was really annoyed with Adam Scott, or not Adam Scott, so sorry, uh, with Ben. Adam Scott played it perfectly, and I understand why he does this, but I was like, if I was Barney, I'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? I cannot with this. Are you serious? Oh, my God. I was kind of mad at him. I was like, but I also understand it. In the grand scheme of things, I if, if this was real life, and even in the show, but if this was real life, I'd be like, I get it. You have to do what you love, and you don't love this, and you know, you want to try something different. I get it. Um. 
But I was just like, seriously, they cared so much. They took you back. They like were so excited for you. They got you gifts and they're laughing at all your jokes. And this is like just such a good fit for you. And you're just going to quit and give them no notice. You don't even say like, okay, I'll be here for two weeks. <laughs> but at the same time, he didn't even start. So I guess that makes sense. Um, but anyway, he quits because he's going to take the Sweetums job. Um, well, I mean, that's what he eventually ends up doing. But and this, at this point, he says, maybe I'll take the Sweetums job. Maybe I'll do this, that, the other. He doesn't really know. Um, but Barney's very sweet. We also talked to him as well. Um, I'll post all these in the show notes. But we talked to Barney. Um, and, oh, my God, he was so nice and so special. And this one, his character is really interesting because his character initially came on during Leslie's house, you know, and... Um, and that was freaking hilarious because he just did the QuickBooks like demonstration and he was so like monotone and kind of boring and everybody was like, oh, my God, I want to die a little bit. Um, but now he's turned into this like really lovely, uh, just excitable cute person um accountant and uh, i remember when we talked to him he had this kind of backstory well he invented this backstory that he had a crush on ben which totally makes sense why he would and i I love that backstory because i think barney would do that even if he didn't but it just makes so much more sense for him to be as uh open arms always and to just be like Okay, yeah, you can come back or you can quit. Or, yes, you can come back. I can help you do anything. Oh, man, you're quitting. And it's just, like, hilarious. Um, so I love that backstory. So thank you for giving us that. And, um, yeah, I do love also that Ben has a panic attack very briefly. He's like, why be an accountant? You know, like, life is short. I could try anything. I could do any of the things that I was offered today. <laughs> Which, side note, I thought was funny that – um. He was also offered a manage- manager job at Urban Outfitters. Like, <laughs> um, they threw that in there kind of as a throwaway line because I, I don't think I'm going to do it, though. Um, but, yeah, he has a panic attack of, like, why be an accountant other than, you know, the above average pay, stability. It's a good career move for my family. And he's like, oh, God, I hope this works out. And it does. It does at the end of the day. Um, I don't think he loves working for Sweetums. We'll talk about that when we talk about that. But it is a I do think he needs this in this point in time. I think a lot of people go through this where they just need a change. They want to try something different. They have the options open to them. So why not try it? You know what I mean? Um, so I get it for Ben's purposes. But um, but yeah, well, that was Leslie versus April. I was telling Maddie, I feel like this was one of the shorter episodes uh, for me as far as notes go. I was actually really, um, you know, I, I love Maddie to be on. Of course I do. But I was just like, honestly, if you're going to miss one, I think we it's better to have Pawnee Commons because that one is just so fun and so different and exciting and kind of moving the story forward. And I feel like this one was a little bit more of a setup episode. You know what I mean? Which is not a bad thing. These episodes are great and hilarious. Um, and I love the dynamic that we see between Leslie versus April. Um, but I do think it's a little bit more of a groundwork. Like let's set the groundwork for how we're going to move forward now. And bringing back Lot 48 is a really important piece of uh, where we are in this season. Um, so I'm very excited to talk about Pawnee Commons. And um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, if you have any other things that you'd like us to research or reach out to Mary Faber about to ask her any other questions, um, please let me know. Don't forget to rate and review, share with all your friends, listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, follow us on Instagram, do all the things. Um, we just want to spread this so much. And um, yes, my heart goes out to everyone who is affected by these hurricanes. I really just hope you guys are hanging in there. And, um, you know, I'm so sorry. Please also register to vote. Um, I think the last day to vote for most people is like in a week or something. So, oh, well, I don't know what time you're going to listen to this. I think the last it's like October 7th or something. I don't know. Just make sure you're registered to vote. OK, time is ticking. Um, I think that's all. Sorry I'm ending this kind of awkwardly. Thank you so much for listening. If you've listened thus far, thank you, Maddie, for sending in the summary. And um, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you again so much. Bye, guys. There's a park and some pals, and there's also therapy, too.